Jeg fik henvendelse fra Due Konsertante om at skrive et stykke til dem. Men øh, jeg havde lidt svært ved at, at finde noget at hænge det op på. Så øh, det tog mig lang tid. Indtil Lennart Pasborg, en god ven af Erik Brun, sendte mig en lille, et lille essay, som hed Alt er betydt. Da jeg læste det, så slog det mig, at her var min indfaldsvinkel til det værk, som jeg skulle skrive til dem. Nemlig en hyldest til denne store danser. På det tidspunkt øh, kendte jeg ikke så meget til øh, Erik Brun. Jeg har mødt ham et par gange, og han har ytret interesse for min musik. Ved de lejligheder, vi har mødtes, og ved et mærkeligt tilfælde, så bor han ikke, eller boede ikke så langt fra, hvor jeg bor. Så et par gange har jeg også mødt ham på gaden og nikket til hinanden og sagt hej. Men øh, da jeg så læste dette essay og læste den lille sætning, hvor han skriver, jeg sad op i æbletræet og kiggede ned på mine søskende, og de stod og kiggede op på mig og talte til mig, og det kunne de jo også sagtens gøre, for kun jeg vidste, at jeg ikke var der. Det sindbuddhistiske element fascinerede mig fantastisk meget. Og så vidste jeg at noget, som jeg troede, jeg kunne bruge. Så begyndte jeg at søge i, i oplysninger omkring ham. Jeg læste bogen om ham, og jeg talte med gode venner. Lennart Pasborg, Ingrid Glintemann, Susse Vold, som jo var en nær ven af ham. Og de fortalte mig brudstykker af hans liv. Jeg så videoer. Og langsomt øh, dannede der sig en, en substans i mig, et, et billede af en, en, en utrolig person. Et, et, et fantastisk menneske på, øh, med, med, med hele rigdommen af, af nuancer i sit, øh, i sit sind, fra øh, de, de vist temperamentfulde til den største øne. Og øh, det blev så til den komposition, som blev videre sendt til Christopher Bruce. I had a telephone call from Kim Shogun to say that they had this piece of music um, written by Paula Mikkelborg and uh, been created uh, with Lars Hannibal, Paula uh, and Kim. And they thought it would make uh, a good ballet score. So they asked if they could send me the um, tape, which they duly did. Uh, from the moment I put the music on, it, it, it captured my imagination. And I said, yes, I, I would like to use it, but I, I wanted to live with the, the music for some time before I could, you know, be to it. But uh, I was due to make a piece for Houston. I, I finally decided to mount it for, uh, what was it, spring 90. And, um, It fitted the um, the idea of the piece, which it was written in uh, memoriam to Eric Brun, and I was uh, sent some uh, essays by Eric Brun, which fascinated me, and the inspiration came very much out of what Eric had to say about his very special gift of talent and the fact that he found it a tremendous burden um, and that others may have had pleasure from his dancing but he often suffered greatly from this gift. Uh, but I didn't want to just make about, about him because how do you present or represent Eric Brun? You, you, there's only one Eric Brun and there are many fine dancers but They all have a very individual quality. So I've made the piece more universal in its narrative. And it isn't a piece just about Eric Brun. It's inspired by him and what he had to say uh, about life and being a dancer. And I, a lot of my own personal experiences, not to do with being a performer, but to do with saying goodbye to dance. Because when you hit your mid-thirties and you feel it going, it is a kind of a death in itself. So there is an ambiguity in the piece. Uh, we see a dancer taken from 
as it could be a real death or maybe a dancer that just has to leave the studio, has to leave the stage because it's time to do so. And I've tried to represent uh, both the pleasure and the joy uh, of being a dancer, but also the, the hardship, the grueling physical and psychological pressures that any dancer undergoes, and especially one that has particular talent which creates burdens for him, especially, you know, very, very sensitive artists. I, see, I think you see this very often when uh, you see tragedy very often happening to very special artists. So um, this was my, my starting point. And I, I decided to set it in the, a studio like this was the world. This is the world of a dancer. The morning beginning with class and what happens throughout the piece. It's like a lifetime or, or a, the lifetime of a class. The two become fused together. You know, there's special moments, even towards the end of a class when you've got through the hardship, doing the bar work, you've warmed up, the pain is beginning to decrease. And for about sort of 20 minutes towards the end of the class, uh, when you've really got a sweat going and uh, that sensation of just enjoying movement. And, and that's what I've tried also to suggest in the piece. This uh, child or muse that comes into the scene is is like a sort of spirit, and she's something that uh, the chosen one, as, I, as I've called him, tries to comprehend and um, search for, reach, touch, but never quite understands it. And this muse, this gift, also tortures him. like a vindictive child. It's something that you can't grasp, you can't handle, which causes you pain and joy.
Thank you.